Hi, everyone, and welcome to Building Resiliency to Stress and Burnout with the Pikes Peak SBDC. We're so excited that you are here and joining us for today's webinar. Thanks again to our sponsors, Ent Business Banking, the tri Lakes Chamber, the BBB, and the Colorado SBDC, as well as Diversus, for putting together this webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to our organization, the Small Business Development Center. We advance small business because that is our business. We provide free consulting, practical training, and business resources, as well as the recovery and continuity to the Pikes Peak region. If you have any questions in regards to this, please head to pikespeaksbdc.org. Of course, we can't do this again with our additional sponsors, El Paso County, Ent Business Banking, the City of Colorado Springs, Park State Bank and Trust, Colorado Springs Utility, Spectra Bank, and the SBA. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to our two speakers. Roberta Renfro is a licensed professional counselor at Diversus Health, managing an outreach and prevention team that proactively collaborates with partner agencies and individuals to build a web of services and supports designed to enhance community resilience through COVID-19 recovery. Roberta is passionate about whole person, patient-centered healthcare, and believes an integrated healthcare team provides the most comprehensive care. She's previously dedicated over 10 years at Diversus Health to providing behavioral health care consultation in primary and specialty care settings, and managing a team of behavioral health care consultants. Prior to her work at Diversus Health, she provided trauma therapy and created group programming for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Roberta enjoys crafting and spending time with her Shih Tzu Lily. Karen Morgan believes her role as community outreach navigator seniors for the COVID-19 response team aligns perfectly with her professional and personal experiences. She spent over six years in management at a nonprofit senior community, and prior to that, worked briefly with the Colorado Department of Corrections. Her longest term career chapter was running a busy piano studio where she delighted in seeing the students grasp each new concept. Karen has volunteered for over 10 years with NAMI in teaching and community outreach roles. She thrives in meeting people from various backgrounds, particularly those living with mental illnesses and living in homelessness. She hopes that the ongoing education and community outreach will continue to break down stigma and give people the skills they need to live a fulfilling life. Thanks for joining us, Roberta and Karen. You can take it from here. Thanks, Mackenzie. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. We're happy to be part of Small Business Development Centers again and um, trying to continue the next iteration of whatever COVID um, provides us. Um, we're talking today about leveraging resilience to manage stress and burnout. Um, we have been talking in the past about what kinds of things can we do to help um, manage stress and to prevent burnout, and we're going to continue that discussion today. Next slide, please. So the objectives today, we, we want to talk a little bit about what, what is the difference between stress and burnout. Those are two words that are used, I think, sometimes interchangeably and sometimes just um, randomly because um, it's something that we all, I think, can relate to. Identify symptoms and warning signs. And then we also want to talk about what prevention looks like and how to build resilience. Next slide, please. So the initial definition that we have for burnout is that basically burnout is stress that has not relieved itself and gone back to normal. So if stress is basically, uh, excuse me, burnout is stress on steroids, and we need to start with what is stress. So if we go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about the stress cycle. So what happens when you come into a stressful situation is that your body reacts before you even have chance to cognitively think through the situation. So stress is a very normal and necessary part of life to keep us safe. So let's say you're out on a walk and you see our little friend here, the mountain lion, peeking over a rock, looking ready to pounce on you. So what happens is your body immediately is flooded with adrenaline and cortisol. And when that happens, your body is filled with glucose which is what we need for energy. And insulin production is stopped so that we're not balancing out that flood of glucose. Also, your, uh, your blood vessels constrict, so your heart rate goes up, 
sure you've all felt that heart pounding um, tenseness that comes when you're under stress. And all of that prepares your body to make a decision. Am I gonna run? Am I gonna fight? Or am I just frozen in fear here and I can't do anything? So this is all a cycle. Then once that perceived stress is gone, our body should return back to a normal level. So I'll let you figure out what happened um, after you saw the mountain lion here. But let's say, obviously we're all here today, so we somehow got away from the mountain lion. And ideally we're back to everything is in balance. The glucose comes back, the insulin level drops, the heart rate drops, the blood vessels go back to normal and we return to a normal state of life. And that's what we want. But what happens then when we stay in that heightened stress mode, when there's extra adrenaline and cortisol in our bodies is we can throw that um, whole insulin level out of whack, end up with diabetes, with heart disease, with weight gain, and a whole host of emotional symptoms. So as we move to the next slide, uh, Roberta's gonna talk a little bit about some of the symptoms of being under stress. And what's interesting is our body is not even aware of the difference between immediate stress and long-term burnout. So she's gonna discuss some of those right now. Yeah, thank you. So um, the, the interesting thing is, yes, your body's gonna respond and it doesn't really matter what the stimulus is. So the things to be, to pay attention to are some of the behavioral, physical, emotional, and cognitive responses that you may notice. Um, and some people notice a number of these, some may notice a few, but um, I think it's important to be, to have awareness um, and that way pay attention to each one of these areas. Behaviorally, you may notice being a little more fidgety or signs um, of um, agitation. You might notice changes in eating, um, whether that's an increase or a decrease in appetite might be the same for sleep. So you may notice a change in terms of sleeping more or sleeping less, um, easily crying, sometimes just avoidance, um, which a lot of these I think is just being able to pay attention to what's not really normal for you. Um, headaches in terms of physical responses, sometimes we notice other somatic symptoms like stomach aches, um, racing heart, Karen was mentioning that. And obviously if a mountain lion is peering at you, it's a normal thing to have your heart rate increase. But if we notice that our heart is just racing um, without a, any provocation, then that may be problematic in the long term to our overall health. Shortness of breath, nausea, um, feeling extra tired or fatigued, even if you are getting plenty of rest. Emotionally, we may notice changes in relationships because we have been more irritable. We may have more mood swings. Um, we might be able to use some of our uh, close supports to help us tap into those things because we may not be aware of them. Well, we, may have, we may be aware and we have an increased sense of guilt um, sense of fear or hopelessness. And then cognitively, we may notice that we have a harder time concentrating or remembering um, difficulty in terms of making decisions and having just less objectivity when we um, are engaged in conversation or trying to make decisions. Next, please. So one other angle I want to look at with burnout, more so relating to our jobs, because I think that's what we want to focus on today, is that you really can't have something burn out if there wasn't a fire in the first place. And I love this mental picture because the way I interpret this is it's really important to look inward and take stock of where you are. For instance, you might realize that you're just not doing well, you're burned out at work, but what's changed? Think back to when you first got that job. How'd you feel when you got that job offer? How did you feel when you got that first paycheck? When you met your coworkers, when you finished that first project, if there was excitement and passion, and now you're sitting here just going, man, I can hardly face Monday morning 
it's time to look at what's happened. Is that change within you or is that change within your organization? It's really important in treating burnout to know, get an idea of what is the cause of it. And it may be time to consider leaving. If you just go, you know, I no longer believe in the mission of the company or I've absolutely done what I could do and my heart is somewhere else, that's fine. But if you start to realize that you are just tired, exhausted, haven't been able to set boundaries, then you might be able to use some of the tools we're gonna talk about here in a minute to rejuvenate your interest and your love for your job. So as we go to the next slide, Roberta again is gonna talk about things to watch for specifically rated to burnout at work. So I like this picture because it's so um, demonstrative. The battery, that's that's what's above this um, this person who has their head on the desk. It's a battery and you can see the little red mark showing a very, very low charge. Um, and so what we're looking at in terms of warning signs might be this um, low job satisfaction. Um, a lot of times more negativity when, when coworkers or um, workers experience burnout, a lot of times there's just a, a more general negative approach, more grumbling, maybe more complaints, um, physical and emotional stress, some of the symptoms from the previous discussion and slide, feeling frustrated by um, others or maybe more judgmental. So maybe being more critical, having a less um, solution focused approach to problems that come up and just being more complaining and negative. Um, supervisors, managers, and even the employee themselves may, may think, may notice uh, more frequent sick days or um, wellness days. They may be taking more time off. Um, they may be feeling uh, or pay attention to signs in yourself or in your employees or staff, um, inability to feel like they're properly regenerating and refueling even when they do have that time off, coming back and feeling no, no more energized. A lot of times it's also feeling uh, under pressure, more powerless and feeling overwhelmed. So um, a lot of times there's maybe a sense of apathy or a sense of that hopelessness, like it doesn't really matter, no matter what I do, no matter what I say, really has no change, that kind of apathy. Next slide. So now we wanna shift gears just a little bit. So to review so far, stress is, major physical changes in your body, when you stay in that stress mode, you might find yourself in a pattern of burnout. So one of the first steps on building resiliency, on healing and prevention is to do that self, um, look at yourself and see where you are, recognize the symptoms, accept the situation. As I touched on, you might need to really look at um, what am I going to do with this? Am I moving on to something else? Or am I going to try to make changes within the job that I find myself? I like to give an example of that. My husband um, is now retired, but he worked for 30 years at the same job. He was very burned out those last few years. But for him, he looked at the situation and said, I still believe in what we're doing. It pays enough to pay the bills. I've accrued my goodness, by 25 or so years, a lot of vacation time, I will accept the fact that I'm not as passionate about it, this as I once was because there's other factors that make this job the best situation for me at this point. So really take time to take stock of where you are. And then we wanna go in a little bit in depth here on self-care. That can make a huge difference, just like Hormones flood into our bodies in a stress cycle. They also flood into our bodies in self-care, those positive hormones that can make us feel better about ourselves and about our situation. And then we will specifically look at um, hacking your hormones and how to do that. So uh, go on to the next slide. This, is, um, this next slide is just a fun little reminder. Next slide. 
Yes, there we go. Um, we've all been on an airplane, I'm sure, and we've listened to the whole, um, you know, when there's problems, you've got to put on your own mask before you can help someone else. Same with self-care. It takes some time. It takes some intentionality to take care of yourself, but you are worth it and you will do better in life, in your job, in your home, in your relationships, in anything that you do, as long as you're taking care of yourself. So um, it's very important to make that as a priority. And now we'll move on to, uh, Roberta will talk about some of the physical ways that we can do self-care. Yeah, um, and these are not all, these are not brand new. I, I realize that um, many people know what these are um, and many people engage in them. But what we have found in, in as we communicate and interface with um, everyone in the community is that there are a lot of times things that get in the way or just the fact that we forget to make them a priority. So let's go through some of these traditional things or things that um, often are looked at, I think, as um, pampering or maybe a treat. And for many people, they are. For some people, it may be just, um, it may be looked upon as part of um, grooming, like taking a shower every day or, or um, brushing your teeth. So however you view it, these are all valid and very supportive ways of taking care of yourself. Massage, massages can um, help reduce stress. A lot of times muscle um, tissue will hold stress. And many people who have um, trauma histories or um, a lot of uh, stress or excuse me, trauma from, um, from a recent, um, Oh, with car accident or things like that. Sometimes people will will um, take care of themselves through massage or through chiropractic or through other care. Um, but this is something you can take a look at and, and decide whether or not that might be something as an ongoing support. And in fact, um, health insurance plans are now recognizing massage and um, acupuncture and chiropractic and things that years ago were not uh, supported as ad adjunctive care. So um, exercise obviously is a, is a huge one. Uh, walking. Walking is like a perfect one that doesn't cost extra money. It's not something that is a, um, challenging for many people um, and can be done on, at, on any various um, physical level. So it's good to, to create routines. Um, and it's also good to make sure you plan uh, for, for healthy rest um, and finding ways to just be playful. Playful can be from a physical standpoint. Um, it can be doing things that, you know, it might be tapping into things that you liked as a child. It might be, um, you know, tapping into doing something silly um, that was that was fun when you were a kid and just revisiting that. Um, it can also be sharing, um, sharing, having simple pleasures and um, just taking care of, of yourself from a standpoint of how you eat. Um, it might just be really being mindful and paying attention to the food that you're eating so that you're really enjoying it rather than grabbing something, eating it on the go and not really even realizing you had a, I had a meal. Um, so those are some main things. And really the last one here is hugely important and that is deep breathing, being able to calm yourself if you do get to that um, agitated state that was mentioned earlier. And it's also just a great way to prophylactically or preventatively um, stay in a calm state or kind of keep your baseline low if you uh, practice deep breathing. Next slide. <clears throat> and anytime we talk about self-care, we wanna make sure that it doesn't come across as a to-do list. Um, we're giving you a smorgasbord here, whole bunch of ideas and uh, you really need to look at what you need right now, what interests you. If you're exhausted, that's not the time to decide you're gonna to go to the gym five times a week. 
So make sure that you're looking at these as suggestions and ideas of how to help you at whatever state you're in. Um, another big one is social. Connection is so important. That was really hard, especially during quarantine. I remember seeing a thing one time that said, um, be sure to check on your extrovert friends. They are not doing well. So um, some of us are recharged by time with people. Some of us are recharged in our quiet time. So again, make sure that you're really finding the things that help you. But connection for all of us is important. And this can be in a lot of different ways. So um, the first thing to be aware of is you're not alone. You are not the only person who has had these feelings of stress and burnout. So try to connect with somebody that maybe can understand. Um, call that person, that special friend that you can just unload with. If you're having some frustrations at work, probably not wise to pick a coworker. Um, so find someone that's safe, that's outside of your circle where you can really be completely honest and just unload some of that frustration. Um, and then connection with things outside of work can be, again, this is a few ideas. It, there's thousands of ways to gather, you know, a church group, a team, a, um, a crafting night, a book club, um, a support group if you feel like you need it. So there's just a myriad of ways. These are just a few suggestions. Another interesting thought of where to connect is social activism. If there's something you feel passionate about, you're gonna find other people that have that same passion that you do. Um, again, not a to-do list. If that's not your thing, don't do it. Volunteering, um, again, if that's just adding something else to an already overstressed list, don't do it. But if there's something that makes you feel good about yourself and about your beliefs and your priorities, go for it. Um, of course, volunteering can be an ongoing thing. It can be a once in a while thing. There's always um, things um, during the holidays, you know, food baskets or gifts for children, backpacks during the summer. There's things that you do on your own. Go foster a litter of puppies from the Humane Society, or you can be committed to being in a school or a nonprofit and helping with their program. So as always, look at your needs right now, but be aware that connecting with other people is really important. And if you find yourself too much time alone, that could be a symptom that you, um, you've got some a little more serious stress going on in your life. Okay, so let's move on to spiritual needs. Thanks, yes. You know, I also wanted to say that as we talk about these, um, not only is it an individual thing, but it's also uh, subject to being able to uh, accommodate your comfort levels. I, I realize that there are still places where um, a mask is maybe not required, but recommended. And then individually, some of us still wanna be more um, take more precautions than other people. So it's okay. And there are ways to volunteer. There are ways to do some of the things that Karen was mentioning without um, necessarily compromising your comfort level. So there, activism, for example, you can, you can go participate in a march or you can do something that's online or virtual um, in order to express your support. So just keep those things in mind as you're navigating some of these. Um, spiritually, something, something bigger than yourself. I think the, the concept of believing in higher powers, God, um, Buddha, whatever it is that is something bigger than yourself is so helpful for us so that we're not only able to cultivate humility, but we're also able to um, recognize that everything doesn't have to be the weight on our shoulders alone. So it's important to uh, be able to tap into whatever your spirituality is um, and seek pleasure from that. You know, part of that is seeking um, the benefit of, of pleasure and of um, being centered. And for some people that's nature as well. So those are those are some different ways that if you hadn't thought of it before, you might think about ways to tap into uh, 
spiritual connection. What kinds of rituals work for you? What kinds of rituals maybe um, that you had from your growing up and some things that you want to continue and some things that maybe you want to, um, to, to discontinue? What kinds of things might you want to explore that you hadn't thought of before? There are different inspirational materials that you could glean ideas from, like books and podcasts. Um, it could be through YouTube. It could be through friends. It could be through um, exploring something that someone else has shared with you. And then um, it's also helpful sometimes to just kind of put those things out there. Some people will put um, on their bathroom mirror uh, a, some kind of a quote or something that's inspirational that helps them feel good about themselves, about the world. Um, and so you can think about ways that you might be able to do that in your home or office. And, um, and again, the time in nature can be very refreshing and um, invigorating for many people. Um, and that's another way to be able to tap into that spirituality. Awesome. Thank you, Roberta. Now we'll move on to some emotional self-care. And once again, everybody is different. So pick things that help you. Um, right off the bat, time off work. If you're feeling really burned out at work, just taking a step back gives you time to take that self-inventory, figure out where you really are. A um, whole different direction, continued education. Maybe you're feeling that kind of tapped out, I'm doing what I can do, but you find out that, boy, if I get this certification or this farther degree, I can take my passion for this work to a higher level. Um, we talked about you know, venting, sharing feelings, some of those kinds of things. Journaling is another way to do that. Um, meditation and mindfulness. We touched on that a little bit in the spiritual area, but all that is is learning ways to set aside all of the everything that's going on. We're bombarded constantly with noise, with social media, with TV, with you know things coming at us all the time, including our things at work. So meditation and mindfulness are ways to just center on exactly what's going on right now. So what I would like to share next is actually take you through a meditation about containers. And that's just preparing you to be able to relax and just set aside some of the stresses. It doesn't say to get rid of them, but just to set them aside for a later time. So get back into a nice comfortable position and prepare yourself just to relax and focus on the voice in this next video so let's move okay so how does that feel do you feel relaxed do you feel centered and just so you know there's hundreds of meditations online if you just type in a relaxation meditation or go to bed meditation some really cool stuff will come up so that's a fun um thing to do in some free time now, Roberta's going to jump into a little bit of why some of this works, this self-care, by talking about how some of the, um, the, uh, the oxytocin and dopamine, some of those hormones in our system are affected when we practice different types of self-care. Yeah, so <clears throat> we've kind of created a little bit of a acronym up there. Um, you can follow that along if you if you think about it uh some people are more versed and interested in the biological side of things we're talking about um feel good hormones dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphins so that creates that little um acronym above called dose so if you think about it what what can you do to have a daily dose in a healthy way, tap into those happiness hormones. Dopamine helps us feel good. Um, it's that part of the brain that's kind of a reward system. So when we do things that um, that that tap into dopamine, um, those are things like celebrating small wins, um, self care, food. We all we get a dose of dopamine from some of the food when we have a nice meal from sleep, from completing tasks and feeling like a job well done. So those are some things to think about in terms of, 
oh, I didn't really tie that in to the fact that, you know, when, when something good has happened, I'm getting a dose of dopamine and that's why I feel good. So think about the ways that you can create that. Um, oxytocin, the love hormone, that's something that a lot of people are familiar with in terms of maybe um, their children. They talk about oxytocin in terms of um, mothers bonding with a newborn and looking into the new into the baby, the maybe not the newborn's eyes, but the baby's eyes and being able to um, have that increase in oxytocin comes from bonding. So you can get that through pets. Um, you can also get that through touch, hugs, connection with friends and family. Um, gra gratitude is huge. Being able to tap into what you have appreciation for and you're grateful for and having that as a focus. Um, and those are all ways that you can healthfully tap into oxytocin. Serotonin is a mood stabilizer. Um, and there are medications, for example, that um, utilize serotonin to increase or utilize uh, medication to increase serotonin if someone is, is struggling with uh, depression. Um, but there are ways that you can regulate and increase serotonin from a non-medication standpoint, such as, again, certain fruits and food, um, enjoying nature, uh, just getting out in the sunshine and have, being active. A lot of times having that walk that I talked about earlier and then just getting some sunshine can help increase a serotonin level in, in, in someone. Um, being able to enjoy music, journaling, meditation, other ways that we touched upon when we talked about tapping into um, being able to to take a look at spiritual, physical, um, emotional needs. Those are all ways to be able to help increase serotonin levels. And then endorphins. Um, endorphins are the pain reliever. And so again, being able to release stress and, and pain um, are ways that we can increase endorphins like massage, um, exercise, sometimes through essential oils, um, people are able to uh, increase that endorphin um, by by smelling certain certain oils, um, lavender. There are different oils that will help increase certain aspects um, of of our endorphins. And then laughter is a huge one. And the interesting thing about laughter is um, that. I think we all can relate to having a good laugh when someone tells a joke or having a good laugh when there's something that happens in our lives that's really funny. Um, but, you know, your body, again, like we talked about earlier, your body's not going to really tell the difference. And if you are able to induce laughter in other ways, um, then your body's still going to get the same rewards um, as if you just watched a movie. So for example, there's something called laughter yoga, and it's something that was um, developed a few years back and has become something uh, globally known. And you would be able to take a look at that if you take a look at YouTube, um, you'll be able to see how that began and you'll be able to see what that concept is about but I'll throw that out there for, for those of you that are curious enough to want to try and uh, learn laughter yoga. Next slide, please. So what is so interesting about these hormones is you don't really need to go through um, an activity and go, gosh, I, did I get enough dopamine today or serotonin? So many of these overlap. You go back to those self-care things and really the hormone release is just showing you why those things make you feel good. So I always like to say, basically, if it makes you feel good, do it as long as it's socially acceptable and legal and you are probably releasing some of those good hormones. But we want to shift gears just a little bit here. Let's say that you are you've really jumped into self-care, you've done some introspective um, thought, and you're really having a rough time. So we want to make sure that you have some 
resources to reach out to you if you feel like you need some extra support. You or someone you know. These this is a great slide to you know to take a picture of or something so you have these contacts at your fingertips. Um, you can call or text our the crisis line. That will connect you with a licensed counselor 24/7 365 days of the year and um, very little information you know that they want to know your age your zip code um they might want to know your name but you don't have to fill out a bunch of forms and you get to talk to a counselor right away um diversus health has a walk-in crisis center they're on parkside again 24 7 365 days of the year they will get a little bit of information about who you are but don't worry about cost or insurance. If you have insurance, they're glad to bill it, but if not, they will not turn anybody away because of an inability to pay for services. So you're in the door talking to a counselor within a very short amount of time. And then if things are maybe not quite at that crisis level, Diversus Health main number has that uh, menu of all the different services and you can set up substance use issues, psychiatric needs, counseling, crisis, all of those things can be accessed by that 572 number. And then Roberta and I are part of the outreach team. So that 299 number will put you into just our call queue. So one of us on the team will talk to you and we can help you with further resources or sometimes you just plain need to talk a little bit to somebody. So we're available for you. DiversusHealth.org is the website for Diversus Health, and you can get all kinds of resources there as well. So let's move on to the next slide. And this will give an idea about a different direction to go. These are additional trainings, not directly part of Diversus Health. These are nationwide and actually worldwide programs, but those of us on the outreach team are certified as instructors to teach these. So QPR, assist, mental health, first aid are all things that you would need to schedule ahead, but you can talk to us at um, the outreach team to get more information and also schedule a time for you as an individual to take these courses or your organization um, or any group, and we can help you get those schedules so you can get trained in these various and sundry different courses. So let's move on to the next slide and roberta can kind of wrap things up and then of course we want to send you away with a good laugh so roberta can wind things up here so this is just a thank you for tuning in today um here's some further resources if you want to look things up and we've given you contact info. So thank you for your time. Have a great week. Take good care of yourself and carry on with your day. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our workshop. Like we have mentioned earlier, if you need free consulting, practical training, business resources, recovery and continuity help, please head over to pikespeaksbdc.org.